How's it going everyone? It is Andre Williams and over here we talk stocks and we focus on one thing. Always protect your profits. And today we're going to be talking about ChargePoint. It ended up seeing a lot of strength in the early parts of the trading session, but then it experienced a sell-off. Overall, it had a small pullback on the day. We'll talk about it further. I won't waste any more time. Let's jump into the agenda. If you're new to this channel, I just want to let you know we have timestamps down below inside the description. But if you're a shareholder or you're thinking about taking a position, I highly suggest you watch this full entire video. So the first thing we're going to go over is the technical analysis. We're going to be taking a look at the overall price action. We want to know support. We want to know resistance. We want to know what it looks like in the bearish case scenario and as well as in the bullish case scenario. And then we're going to go on Fintel taking a look at the recent institutional ownership and short interest information. The reason why this is important because it does have an impact on the way the stock performs. And then we're going to be taking a look at the order flow distribution. We want to know the buying and the selling behavior on the the retail side and as well as on the institutional side and then when all of that is done we'll be going into the final thoughts and as well as some more details so let's get to it so we're going to do a technical analysis for charge point let's see how it performed on the day so it ended up closing at $13.38 being down 0.89 percent on the low it tested $13.06 and then on the high testing $14.10 when we take a look at the volume stats on the day you can see we traded at 7.019 million shares and the average volume over 10 trading days is at 9.684 million shares so we did have below average volume on the day we also saw a lot of volatility in the market so we've seen a pullback in this stock now when we take a look at the chart which is a daily chart we can see from the rsi down below it is at 42.52 and then when we take a look at our moving averages here on the chart we are below the 200 day the 100 day the 50 day and as well as the 21 day ema and like I've said in previous videos, ChargePoint is in a bear market. But one of the things I want to bring to your attention as far as for the low where we tested at 1306, you can see we do have some support here. So if we end up having a pullback, then the next level you want to look out for is to see it hold up at least above 12. 50. This is where we can see charge point where you want to see some strength right at $12. Now, if things look bullish and we start seeing some buying picking up inside of the market, we know we have resistance right here around $15. So if we can get above $15, this is where I'm going to look for us to actually start making that move so we can get closer to the 50 day around $16.56. So either we get a catalyst or just more money coming into the EV sector, I can see charge point being able to reach these levels. If we continue to trade sideways, this is where we can have some potential weakness, especially as we get closer in regards to seeing what they're going to be doing with interest rates and so on. So that's why I wanted to give you guys an idea of where this stock can pull back to. But if you believe in the long term prospects, there's still some upside in charge point. So let's see how charge point performs as this week continues. But I feel this is a stock you really do need to keep a close eye on, especially if you're looking at taking a long term investment. So now let's move on to the short interest information. So we're going to take a look at the recent institutional ownership and short interest information for ChargePoint. As we scroll down further on the page, green rows indicate new positions, while red rows indicate closed positions. So we're going to take a look at the recent filings for February the 14th. You can see that we have a good amount, so we're going to be focusing on the ones that are the most noticeable. So we see Tudor Investment Management Corp. that purchased 38,834 shares. We have Parallax Volatility Advisors that with a call value of 140,500 shares and we also see with puts of 48,200 shares and then when we see for Truist Financial Corp that purchased 15,289 shares we also see a closed position right there we also have Shepherd Financial Partners LLC that purchased 14,717 shares and we have Polar Capital Holdings PLC that purchased 62,322 shares scrolling down even more we see here for United Capital Financial Advisors LLC they purchased 10,525 shares and we also have KCM Investment Advisors that purchased 10,725 shares and we also have Ballyasney Asset Management LLC that purchased 10,998 shares and we also have Vonta Bell Holdings Limited that purchased 37,450 shares as we scroll down to see some more we see Walleye Trading 
Trading LLC that purchased 31,793 shares. We also have FinTrust Capital Advisors LLC that purchased 10,000 shares. And we have Alpine Global Management LLC that purchased 42,932 shares. Scrolling down some more, you can see the filings continue. Wait, we're almost done actually. We have Janice Henderson Group PLC that purchased 35,916 shares. And we have Money Concepts Capital Corp that purchased 16,172 shares. And we have Howe and Russell Inc that purchased 1,000. And Magnetar Financial LLC that purchased 13,575 shares. So now when we take a look at the short interests, the off exchange short volume ratio is at 57.34%. And then for the dark pool short volume, it is just over 2.28 million shares. Scrolling down further on the page, the short shares availability is at 4.1 million, updated 27 minutes ago. And then for the short ball fee rate, it is at 0.49%. When we take a look at the history of the short volume ratio, we can see for the close of the 10th, it was at 56.25. And then for the close of the 11th, being at 57. 7.34. So what this tells us, yes, ChargePoint does continue to have short squeeze potential. So now let's move on to the order flow distribution. Now let's take a look at the order flow distribution for ChargePoint. We see here on the inflows at 9.77 and then on the outflows at 9.32. Taking a look at the breakdown on the large, it was zero. On the medium, it was 6.54. And then on the small, it was 3.23. On the outflow side, it was zero on the large. On the medium, it was 6.36. And on the small, it was 2.96. Taking a look at the large scale orders in the last Last five days you could see for February the 14th we had zero but we did have an outflow day on the 11th which was last week Friday being at a negative 2.28 million analyzing the numbers even further for the small scale orders that tends to represent the retail side we had more buying than we had selling and then when we take a look at what happened on the medium, we had more buying than we had selling. And then when we take a look at the large, which represents whales, institutions, and funds, we see zero on both sides. And now when we take a look at the turnover ratio, it was at 2.12%. So this is not too bad for a stock like ChargePoint. We know it is a growth stock at the end of the day. It does come with a lot of volatility. And especially if we end up getting a catalyst, traders are going to be showing a lot of interest. Like I was saying before previously, we experienced a lot of momentum in the earlier parts of the day and this is right around the time where we had Tesla running up big time where it almost got to $900. So this is why you want to make sure you keep these plays on your watch list all together so you could see when the big money is coming into the sector and be able to profit from it. So now let's go into the final thoughts and we'll go over some more details as well. So for my final thoughts for charge point in regards to the price action you can see we do have some resistance right at $14 and we have a strong area of support right around $13. If it does decide to pull back even more, then I want to see it hold up at least $12.50. And if $12.50 breaks, then we can see this stock testing at $12. As far as for a bullish move to the upside, so if you're looking for a reversal, it's going to need to get to $16. But in order to do that, it needs to get past that resistance right around $14. So add that to your homework and as well as your due diligence. And if you see strength in the market and there's a lot of buying coming in, especially into the EV sector and tech stocks, these are the levels that you want to look out for. Also, when we went on Fintel, taking a look at the recent institutional ownership, we can see institutions are continuing to load up on shares. So this is what I'm saying. If you are an investor, this is something you want to see. And then when we took a look at the short interest information, it does continue to have short squeeze potential. So this is why if we have a lot of buying volume coming through the stock, or we have some sort of a catalyst, we could see ChargePoint make some moves to the upside. And this is why you want to be prepared do your homework and do your due diligence. This is essential, especially with the markets that we are in. I was saying when it comes to tech stocks during a bear market, especially the ones who are not profitable as of yet, they're going to be experiencing a lot of volatility. And that's what we have been seeing with ChargePoint. But at the end of the day, you guys know already as far as ChargePoint is concerned, it is one of my long-term plays. So as far as this price action that is happening, it doesn't bother me whatsoever. I just try to make sure that I can load up on that dip when it 
it does present itself. And right now at the current price, if I see a pullback happening, then I'm going to wait for that dip. That's just my personal strategy. You can go with whatever works for you. And for anyone that wants to swing trade this stock, as far as when I talk about support, that might be an area where you want to have your stop loss so you don't put yourself in a bad position. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll be talking real soon.